Well, I want to thank everybody. This is a fantastic state. This is a great, great state. You know, we won New Hampshire three times now. Three. three. We win it every time. We win the primary. We win the generals. We've won it. And it's a very, very special place to me. It's very important. If you remember, in 2016, we came here and we needed that win. And we won by 21 points, and it was great. And uh, today, I have to tell you, it was very interesting because I said, wow, what a great victory. But then somebody ran up to the stage all dressed up nicely <laughs> when it was at 7. But now I just walked up and it's at 14. <laughs> but, but she ran up when it was 7. And, you know, we have to do what's good for our party. And she was up and I said, wow, she's doing uh, like a speech like she won. She didn't win. She lost. And, you know, last, last week we had a little bit of a problem. And if you remember, Ron was very upset because she ran up and she pretended she won Iowa. And I looked around. I said, didn't she come in third? Yeah, she came in third. And then I looked at the polls. She was talking about most winnability, who's going to win. And I had one put up. I don't know if you see it, but I have one put up. We've won almost every single poll in the last three months against Crooked Joe Biden. Almost every poll. And she doesn't win those polls. And she doesn't win those. This is not your typical victory speech, but let's not have somebody take a victory when she had a very bad night. She had a very bad night. And you, uh, you have the... You have the very, the now very unpopular governor of this state. This guy, he's got to be on something. I've never seen anybody with energy. He's like a uh, hopscotch. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm watching this guy, and two weeks ago, he said, we're going to win, we're going to win in the land side, we're going to win. About three days ago, he started saying, well, we want to do well. That's a big difference. But I walked out just now, we're 14 points up, and I don't know what it's going to be, but when she was up here, it was like six or seven. And, you know, with like 7% of the vote counted. Now, uh, let, let me just tell you, we, uh, we had an unbelievable week last week in Iowa. We set a record. It was the best in the history of the caucus, in the history. And uh, I remember I sort of had the same feeling. I'm up and I'm watching. And I said, she's taking a victory lap. And we, we beat her so badly, she was, but Ron beat her also. You know, Ron came in second and he left. She came in third and she's still hanging around. The other thing, she only got 25% of the Republican votes. I don't know if you saw that. Tremendous numbers of independents came out because in this state, because you have a governor that doesn't frankly know what the hell he's doing, in this state, in the Republican primary, they accept Democrats to vote. In fact, I think they had 4,000 Democrats, Democrats before October 6th. They already voted. Now, they're only voting because they want to make me look as bad as possible. Because if you remember, we won in 2016. And if you really remember, and if you want to play it straight, we also won in 2020. <laughs> By more. And we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016. But as they said, we lost by a whisker, just by a whisker. No, 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 but we can't let that happen. You know, you have to have people that speak up. I said, I can go up and I can say to everybody, oh, thank you for the victory, it's wonderful, it's what, or I can go up and say, who the hell was the imposter that went up on the stage before and like claimed a victory. She did very poorly, actually. She had to win. The governor said, she's gonna win, she's gonna win, she's gonna win. Then she, she failed badly. Now I have here, if he promises to do, to do it in a minute or less, but the only person more angry than, let's say me, but I don't get too angry, I get even. The only person, The only per because he was there, and he did fantastically well, by the way, and then he endorsed me. And we don't have to talk about Tim Scott, who, by the way, just got engaged, we have to tell you. And that's more important than all of this stuff. But a man that got to know her very well is Vivek. I said, Vivek. 
I said, Vivek, go up and say a few words about it. He has to do it in one minute or less, and then we're going to just say, we had one hell of a night tonight. And one other thing before Vivek comes, do you see that poll? We're going to put it up. We have beaten Biden. You could almost say, who can't? Who the hell can't? The man can't put two sentences together. He can't find the stairs off a stage. Who can't? But Vivek, one minute or less. Go do it, Vivek. What we saw tonight is America first defeating America last. That's what we saw tonight. If you want America last, you can go to Joe Biden. You got another candidate still apparently in the Republican primary. Cut your Social Security to fork over more money to Ukraine so some kleptocrat can buy a bigger house. Go to Nikki Haley. But you know who delivered a double-digit victory tonight? It is a double-digit victory as of right now is this man, Donald J. Trump, the leader of America first. And that means something. Now, USA and Donald Trump, America first. Now, I got, I got 30 seconds left. I want to make this point here, okay? We got to say this. We got to say this right. What we see right now with her continuing in this race is the ugly underbelly of American politics, where the mega donors are trying to do one thing when we the people say another. And it's up to us to we the people to at long last say, hell no, we the people create a government that is accountable to us. And we the people have said tonight, we want again, as we did in Iowa, Donald J. Trump. And so you want to actually speak truth. That's the truth tonight. And the only thing they're rooting for is an ugly thing that we don't want to see happen. That's what these people are rooting for, is playing to say long enough so the Reed Hoffmans and the ugly Democratic George Soros Juniors who are funding the lawsuits against Trump can prop up their puppet. We say no to that vision. I say the general election begins tonight, and this man will win it in a landslide. God bless you, Donald J. Trump. Vote Trump USA. Very nice. Wasn't that nice? So, this was a great evening, and I want to thank everybody in the audience, and I want to thank the people that are standing behind me. You know, uh, I think we called it right. Immigration's a big deal. A big deal. A very big deal. We have millions and millions of people flowing into our country illegally. We have no idea who the hell they are. They come from prisons, and they come from mental institutions and it's gonna it's just killing our country and i'm talking about millions and millions and millions they are drug dealers they're everybody and they come in just like walking right through there's nobody to check and there's nobody to vet and we have a man with us tonight tom homan who is central casting he's central cast and I'd like you to say a few words about the border and who's going to solve that problem and how quick are we going to do it, Tom? Go ahead, please. Look, I worked for six presidents, Donald Ronald Reagan, and every president I ever worked for did something to secure the border. But no one did more than President Trump, the most secure border in my lifetime. the most secure border we've ever seen. And Donald Trump's gonna do it again. We're gonna lock the border down, and we're gonna protect Americans. Because what's happening at the border right now, record number of Americans have died from fentanyl poisoning, record number of migrants have died, a record number of women and children have been sex trafficked, a record number of known suspected terrorists across the border. There's one man who's proven he can secure the border, and he's standing to my left, Donald J. Trump, he's gonna do it again. Thank you very much, John. So, this is an evening uh, that uh, I will not forget because it's the third time. But more importantly, uh, I think it's going to be—I think it's going to be the most important time. Uh, we won uh, both. It was, uh, I think they said somebody said you rarely—if you win both, they've never had a loser. Let me put it that way. When you win. Iowa and you in New Hampshire, they've never had a loss. There's never been. So we're not going to be the first, I can tell you. And I just, I just do want to reiterate the polls. 
We're way up on everybody. We're way up on Biden. And over the last couple of months, if you check, and you have to remember, in 2016, they were saying, oh, what does he know about elections? He's not going to win. He can't win. He can't win. Well, we won. And we got millions, and you can check this, and I hope the cameras don't turn off because they hate this, but we got millions and millions of more votes the second time. Right, Mr. Congressman? Millions and millions of more votes. And, uh, but we had COVID, and they used COVID to cheat, and they did a lot of other things, too. We're not going to let that happen. And that's, still, and that's still going along. We don't forget. You can never forget history, because if you forget, you never you never recover from it, and you repeat, you repeat, and we're not going to repeat. We're going to have the greatest election success. We're going to turn our country around. In, if you take a look throughout the history of our country, if you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of this not great country right now, it's a country in decline, it's a troubled country, it's a failing country, frankly. But if you took the 10 worst presidents and put them together, the 10 worst, absolutely 10 worst. I used to say five. Remember, I said I'd say five. Then I said, wait a minute, like we can add another five. They would not have done the damage that crooked Joe Biden has done to our wonderful country. They would not have done the damage. There's never been anything like it. And you say, are they stupid people? I don't think so, because nobody can cheat that well if they're stupid. Do they hate our country? They must hate our country because there's no other reason that they can be doing the things they do. Take a look. The taxes, they want to raise your taxes times four. They want to let the Trump tax cuts, the biggest tax cuts in the history of our country, they want them to expire. Your taxes are going to go through the roof. You take a look at regulations. They're throwing regulations. You can't breathe. You can't even breathe with what they're doing. You take a look at our border. So bad, there's never been a border like this in the world. Four years ago, we had the safest, best border in the United States. I built hundreds of miles of border wall. And they always say, oh, he didn't build hundreds of miles. Because if there's a board laying on the ground, they say, that's a renovation. They call it a renovation. If there's two nails laying from 50 years ago, they say, oh, that was a renovation. These are very dishonest people. And you're always fighting them. And just a little note to Nikki. She's not going to win. She's not going to win. But if she did, she would be under investigation by those people in 15 minutes. And I could tell you five reasons why already. Not big reasons. A little stuff that she doesn't want to talk about. But she will be under investigation within minutes. And so would Ron have been. But he decided to get out. He decided to get out. Now, Vivek, I don't think, would be at all because he's perfect, right? And Tim Scott, I know, would never. That's no chance. Hey, Tim, do you want to say something? Come on. Come on. I want him to say something. New Hampshire. The president said a double-digit win in New Hampshire, and you delivered a double-digit win for President Trump. But I'm going to invite you to my home state starting tomorrow, where this election is over. It is time for the Republican Party to coalesce around our nominee and the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. Let's get that party started tonight. What a good guy. What a good man he is. But just remember, I, I did hear Nikki say, and now it's off to South Carolina. Well, I love South Carolina. I, I love it. But, you know, she forgot one thing. She forgot one thing. Next week, it's Nevada. Next week, it's Nevada. It's not South Carolina. We love South Carolina, but next week, it's Nevada. And I'm pleased to announce we just won Nevada. We just won. 100 percent. Because all of them, they looked at it, and they took polls, and I was polling at 95% to 4 or 5%. And they decided not to play in Nevada. So we just won Nevada. We have a man from uh, Nevada here, Steve Wynn, wherever he may be. And John Paulson, the great John Paulson, made plenty of money in Nevada. Doesn't live there, but he makes a hell of a lot of money. He makes money everywhere he goes, actually. 
So money machine, maybe we'll put you, you know what? Put him at treasury. You want to make a little money? Let's put you. Anyways, good. Good to have you guys. Uh, but we go to Nevada, and that's been one. So we pick up all of those delegates. And then we do go to South Carolina, where we've done really well, where I've done well. We have a great governor and lieutenant governor and great everything, because almost every one of them have endorsed me. Two great senators, which is hard. I mean, did you ever think that she actually appointed you, Tim? And think of it, appointed, and you're the senator of his state, and she endorsed me. You must really hate her. No, it's, uh, it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I just love you. No, that's, that's why he's a great politician. That's why he's a great politician. So this is a great evening. And it is, you know, we are going to Nevada for a little while. We're not going to have to do too much. We have a great team there. But it's a team that uh, we can now send someplace else. They did a fantastic job. But... Uh, we, and it's a fantastic place, really a fantastic place. But we'll be leaving there very quickly. We'll head out to South Carolina, where I think we're going to win easily. I think we're 50 points up, 5-0. 5-0, 50 points up on a person that was governor. That tells you something. But I felt I should do this because I find in life you can't let people get away with bullshit, okay? You can't. You just can't do that. And when I watched her in the fancy dress that probably wasn't so fancy come up, I said, what's she doing? We won. And she did the same thing last week, but he was much more angry about it than I was. I said, get up there and you let him know. We are going to win this. We have no choice. If we don't win, I think our country is finished. I do. I believe our country is finished. We have an opportunity to do something so amazing. And the good news and the reason we have such support, the best numbers I've ever had, the reason we have support is because they are so bad at what they're doing and so evil. And they're destroying our country. So I want to thank, I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank this group of people. We will never forget you. We will never forget. And I made a pledge. I made a pledge to your state that you have the highest energy costs in the country. In the first year, they're going to be reduced by 50% because we are going to drill, baby, drill. Drill, baby, drill. Inflation's going to come way down. But in the first year, your energy costs are going down by 50%. Thank you very much. We love you. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. We'll see you on the trail. And thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. We will see you on the trail. Thanks.